All right, so this is the painting that I'll be doing. I'll be using mostly knives. And the knives I like to use are RGM. They're made in Italy. They're really nice. You can buy them on Amazon if you're like me. I like to take advantage of my Amazon Prime. But you can also buy them on their website. They have, a, they have a much bigger selection on the website. Mainly all you're going to need, though, is their, their classic 45 um, 045. It's an excellent knife. That's the one I use mostly. This bigger one here is nice for um, laying in like really, really big areas. But I notice even for what I'm doing now, I'm like, no, I think I'm going to use the 45, which is, has a diamond shape. And uh, that original brush was just a generic brush I bought on uh, Amazon. And I just looked for one that, it was like three to a pack. And I just looked for one that had a nice um, hard snap, like, um, yeah, and I got lucky. And it was, they're actually really good. They don't shed hair or anything. can't remember the brand of that one. And the other brush I'm using right now is an angled brush. And it's by uh, Silver. So it's a silver brush. I believe it's their Ruby Satin or something like that line. I can't remember what they call it, but Ruby something. And it's nice. I like it. It's really good for acrylics. It has a nice uh, snap to it. And so, as with any painting, especially with acrylic, I like to layer it uh, with different colors and variations of color. Now, what I do there is that's uh, Golden's Glazing Medium. That's the gloss version. If you want your paintings to look like, like oil, you want to use gloss uh, mediums. But you can also just varnish with a gloss varnish too. Actually, and golden, golden. I'm using golden acrylics as well. They kind of have a, kind of a gloss, sort of to themselves anyway. They kind of look like oils, regardless of what you add to them. I like that. So I make my own black, and here I'm using kind of a grayer version of that black, and I make black. There's a lot of different ways to make black. The black I really like to use though is uh, equal parts of burnt umber, and phthalo blue. It makes a really nice, really dark, dark black. You'll see that here in a, in a bit. And then when you add white to it, it makes a really nice uh, gray. And by adding just a little bit more phthalo blue, you get a cool gray. By adding just a little bit more burnt burnt umber, you get a warmer gray. The other ways to make black is using three the three primary colors. So equal parts of yellow, red, and blue. Start with that first and then adjust as you need. Maybe adding a little more blue or red. Use equal, equal parts to give you a decent black. Make sure they're primary yellow, like Naples. Uh, red and yellow, and then, I don't know, maybe phthalo blue. And then uh, another way to do it is uh, you can add, you can try like burnt sienna or even raw umber and mix that with uh, phthalo blue. You can also try ultramarine blue and burnt umber and get different kinds of black that aren't quite as dark. But they also make really nice grays, so you make that black first and then you add white to it to make interesting grays. Notice most of this painting is just different kinds of grays, and I'm, I'm mainly getting that with uh, the first grays here. I'm getting with burnt umber and ultramarine blue and white, titanium white, and then um, adding a little bit of phthalo, phthalo blue to it as well to get it a little bit more cooler. And it changes it changes the temperature temperature it changes the type because phthalo blue and ultramarine blue are very different kinds of blue. And when they mix with white, they make very different types of blue. Um, even when they're just pure out of the tube, they're, they're different. So here you can see the, the actual black that I made. You can see it's really dark. Even in person, when you see this, um, like you look at the painting in person, it's very, very dark, um, like you'd expect black to be. And in fact, sometimes I think it's darker in appearance than Mars black. You can also add a little bit of Mars black to it if you want to. Um, but I don't. Or Payne's Gray. It's a nice. Payne's Gray is actually a pretty nice um, starting point. You can add a little bit of phthalo blue to it to, to cool it, cool it, make a kind of a cooler gray, and uh, add a little bit of burnt umber to make it a warmer gray. Then you can add equal parts of burnt umber and and the phthalo blue to darken it up, make it a darker gray, or titanium white to make it a lighter gray. So the idea of this, I, I had already painted this previously um, digitally, because I, you know, and, and often I will enter a kind of, you know, meditative state when I when I paint, and lately that's that's all I like to do. So I wanted a, a, a physical copy of it, and I didn't want it to be exactly the same because I don't like painting the exact same thing. But the idea is the same, 
and that is we're we're in three-point perspective so we're looking up as if we're underneath and the idea here is uh, maybe a, a city that has been destroyed by a bomb or something uh, obviously a huge bomb maybe nuclear nuclear blast or something and we're looking up at it from underneath the bridge so we're like seeing the underside of the bridge and then we're seeing we're looking up at the buildings I thought it was kind of interesting to to see a abstract that was done in this kind of view uh, most of the time abstracts are done very flat and they're not done in perspective at all so I thought hey this would be interesting to do a a worm's eye view perspective for an abstract painting and I think that came out nice the difficult part is to stay in a meditative state uh, while painting so that you can focus on your your energy and on on your emotions so you can put those you know the all the emotion into every stroke or into every you know whether it's a stroke of the brush or stroke of the knife as you can see most of this painting is done with the knife i like to do most of my paintings with a knife i, I find it very relaxing and you get a lot you get um, a different interesting kind of control with the knife like all that there was done with the knife And so I have this idea that that left part of the bridge there, maybe some people live in there. Like you can kind of go in it like a tunnel almost. And so they have a fire going, and you'll see that a little bit later. Another thing is I don't I don't really worry about color matching so much. Like I don't I don't try to match my colors perfectly because I want color variation throughout my painting. This is true pretty much no matter what I'm painting. Um, if if it's important that the color matches pretty close, I'll get it close, but I still want variation. And so if I don't match the color perfectly then I'll go into that color I previously had and if it's already dry then I'll just kind of dry brush over it then I'll take that color make it again and then put that color back in the other color so they kind of go back and forth into each other I like to do that a lot I like to make colors go back and forth into each other of slightly different um, like slightly different values so one's a little darker than the other but pretty much almost the same color, just slightly different hues, slightly different values, and it really adds a lot of variation to it. To make the, the depth here, what I wanted to do was add different values of these different kinds of grays as it goes back further. And then as things come toward us, they get darker in color. And that's um, pretty true of a silhouette type of lighting where the lights coming from behind the objects like if you look at a sunset you know all the things in the foreground are going to be very very dark and as things get closer to the sun like that is towards the horizon line they actually get lighter and there's that little fire I was talking about and then I always like if I'm if I'm working with a lot of grays and this is a lot of grays and yeah it's kind of like blue most of its you know cool grays but I'm working with a lot of desaturated colors I like to pop my painting by adding some nice saturated colors throughout it just little little accents and that's where I did all the little red there and then yellow and some little bit of blue and depending on what it is that the painting is of and what kind of abstract it is then I will that determines what kind of shapes I'm going to do for my accented um, lights you know for example in this another one I'll be I'll be posting soon um, it has these abstract lovers and it's a uh, almost like an alien kind of abstract uh, as far as uh, you have to see it it's really interesting different and that that, that yeah the the highlights I do differently in that one and actually I want to show that again um, I know it went by really fast so I'm going to show that faster or slower so you can kind of see me look around and take up close-ups of the painting but yeah that's it hey if you enjoy this please do me a favor like it subscribe leave a comment on what you like to see next or just leave a comment like hey that was cool or just something simple um, it'd be awesome it actually helps the the videos grow and so if you like the video I'm sure that was well too so by just leaving a comment and sharing it doesn't help other people see it and help the video grow it'll help YouTube see that people are commenting and they'll help share it you know like it makes the video get uh, searched more often and within YouTube search engine so more people can find it and that's awesome and lastly please join the Facebook group for updates. So if you want to stay up to date on when I come out with new videos, that's the best way to do it. Also, you can hit the bell notification here on YouTube. But join the Facebook group, which is your um, apps, your gallery, your abstract gallery painting, something like that. Anyway, I had the link in the description. Also, the link will be at the top of the comments here. 
and uh, click on that link and then you can join the Facebook group and also that allows you to post your own abstract paintings and you can request feedback if you want me to give you some sort of feedback on it and or if you want anyone to give feedback on it then that's you know go ahead and request it right now I'm pretty much the only one commenting on stuff right now because it's a new group but yeah go ahead and uh, leave that and just let me know what kind of feedback you would like I don't want to give feedback you don't want and uh, yeah so that's pretty much it and why you might want my, my want my feedback, I'll check out my other paintings on my gallery there. The link is in the description as well. You can see paintings I've sold and the ones that are still for sale. And I've, I've been making paintings, um, smaller ones and stuff that are going to be more affordable. Um, so I just got to, I just got to make more of them. Um, they're going to be like a hundred, around a hundred dollars, maybe even under a hundred dollars. I really want to have a good price line for everybody. Uh, that way they can own a painting if they wanted one. All right. Thank you for watching.